The main part of the kidney is called the nephron, and the nephron is the structural and functional unit of the kidney that forms the urine, and we have approximately at least one million nephrons per kidney, and the two main parts of the nephron are the renal corpuscle and the renal tubule. So the corpuscle has two main parts within it. It has a high pressure capillary bed, which is unlike any other throughout the body, and it allows for the filtrate formation. So this is what is removed from the blood that then leads into the next part of the nephron called the renal tubule. So within this area, within the renal corpuscle, are the glomerulus, and then surrounding it is a capsule called the glomerular capsule, also called the Bowman's capsule. And it's kind of a cup-shaped structure that surrounds the glomerulus, and it has two specific layers. And it, there's an inner layer and an outer layer. The inner layer is the visceral layer, which clings to the capillaries and has foot-like projections called podocytes, and an outer layer, which is simple squamous epithelium. So our next uh, slide is going to show the location and the structure of the nephrons. So the first part of the nephron is the renal corpuscle, and it's located in the outer renal cortex of the kidney. The next part of the nephron is the renal tubule, and you can see on the right the anatomy, the histology of the glomerulus, the glomerular capsule, first of all, the outer layer, and the inner layer, the visceral layer, is where the podocytes are, these feet-like modifications of epithelium. Now the renal tubule is what receives the filtrate that's been formed at the glomerulus. The first part of the renal tubule is the proximal convoluted tubule. So the term proximal refers to the fact that it is close to the glomerulus. And its histology is cuboidal looking cells. And they're very, very numerous and has a much smaller lumen than other parts of the renal tubule. The next part of the renal tubule is called the nephron loop. It's also called the loop of Henle, and there's a region of it that descends down into the renal medulla, and then it ascends, it goes back into the renal cortex. And the next part of the renal tubule is called the distal convoluted tubule, and it also has cuboidal-like epithelium, and then this leads into the collecting duct, finally. So one important thing to notice is that the nephron loop, also called the loop of Henle, has very thin epithelial cells, which allows for the reabsorption of water and solutes. And again, that's going to be different than the proximal convoluted tubule cells, the distal convoluted tubule cells, and then finally the collecting duct cells. So let's look a little more closely now at the renal tubule and the collecting duct. The renal tubule has three main parts to it, which we just saw in the previous slide. The first part is the proximal convoluted tubule, which is closest to the renal corpuscle. Then there's the nephron loop, or the loop of Henle, it has a descending portion and an ascending portion, the distal convoluted tubule, and then finally this drains into the collecting duct, and the collecting duct is going to receive filtrate from many different nephrons, and it will drain into the minor calyx, leading to the major calyx, renal pelvis. So the proximal convoluted tubule as we've already seen, is cuboidal looking cells with dense microvilli that forms the brush border. This is where there's going to be a significant amount of reabsorption and also secretion. And again, it's confined primarily in the renal cortex. The next portion, the nephron loop, also called the loop of Henle, so these two terms mean the same thing. There's a descending portion 
and the descending portion is going to have simple squamous epithelial cells and there's water that's going to be reabsorbed so the filtrate becomes more and more concentrated and then the ascending limb is also called the thick ascending limb is going to have more cuboidal or columnar cells so the last part then of the renal tubule is the distal convoluted tubule and this is going to have cuboidal cells as well but with less or fewer microvilli than what were in the proximal convoluted tubule but here again there is more secretion than reabsorption so it's kind of the opposite of what happened in the proximal convoluted tubule and as we can see on this histology image kind of like what you will see in lab the renal corpuscle is going to have squamous epithelium that are surrounding the glomerulus the glomerulus is high pressure capillaries and the proximal convoluted tubule are going to look quite different there's going to be a lot more of them than distal convoluted tubule notice with the distal convoluted tubule you see a difference in the cuboidal or columnar cells quite a bit different than the shape of the proximal convoluted tubule cells so the last part of the renal tubule is containing the collecting duct and the collecting duct has two specific cell types in it there's principal cells and intercalated cells the principal cells they maintain water and sodium balance and the intercalated cells they are cuboidal and there's two main types of intercalated cells there's A and B cells and they play a role with acid base balance and they run through the medullary pyramids which then lead to the minor calyx so finally leading to the minor calyx and what we have is two different classes of nephrons in our body and there's uh, cortical nephrons and as you can see the cortical nephrons make up about 85 percent of nephrons in our body and this helps to differentiate us differentiate us to other species in other species there are more juxtamedullary nephrons the juxtamedullary nephrons are in species that don't have the ability to drink lots of extra water we have water fountains everywhere we carry water bo water bottles around all the time so we don't need as many juxtamedullary nephrons only about 15 percent of our nephrons are juxtamedullary nephrons so i'm going to zoom in here so you can see this a little closer and the big difference between the two nephrons are on the left we have a cortical nephron notice there's a very short nephron loop but on the right side is a nephron loop which is a lot longer and it has a capillary a specialized capillary around it called the vasa recta so the two types of capillaries are the vasa recta in juxtamedullary nephrons and then surrounding the cortical nephrons are the paratubular capillaries again the one that's much more common in us so again the cortical nephron has a short nephron loop and the juxtamedullary nephron has a very long nephron loop and so we've already seen the blood vessels that go throughout the nephron and those blood vessels specifically the capillaries are functioning with reabsorption and secretion the movement of molecules back and forth from the nephron into the blood vessels so our next slide is showing us the specialized characteristic of these nephron capillary beds so the first capillary bed is this high pressure capillary that's specialized for filtration and filtration is the high forced movement of water that comes out of the capillary blood vessels and enter into enters into the renal tubule and it's fed by an arteriole and there's another arteriole which 
also takes the blood out of the glomerulus, which is very unique in the body. So the afferent arterial arises from the cortical radiate artery. So this radiates or spreads throughout the cortex. And the efferent arterial leads into one of two different capillaries. So if it's a um, cortical nephron, there's a paratubular capillary. If it's a um, juxtamedullary nephron, then it's a vasorecta. And so what, again, is really, really unique about this specific type of capillary is the blood pressure is very high. It's much higher than capillaries anywhere else in the body. Then the other two types of capillary beds are the paratubular capillar capillaries. These are low pressure porous capillaries that are surrounding the rest of the renal tubule. And there's also the vasa recta, which is found in juxtamedullary nephrons. So it's specialized for long nephron loops. And again, that's about 15% of all the different nephrons that we have in our kidneys. And they specialize in the formation of concentrated urine.